G'day. Happy New Year for 2025. We're going to have a look at this Dell Precision 5690. It's a 16 inch mobile workstation from Dell. Now a lot of people ask me what's the difference between a laptop and a mobile workstation. Now really I can just tell you it's pretty much these mobile workstations are designed for very high intensity or high workloads for very long duration of time. That's what these mobile workstations, so it's good for those professionals and also researchers. So they actually run very high intensity tasks on these computers here and pretty much does it to 24 seven. That's what these mobile workstations are designed for compared to your laptop, which are do for like your quick bursts or just your quick in and out and very small round tasks. But these are designed for much high and much higher load tasks here. So that's what a mobile workstation is. This was released around about mid 2024, but I'm still going to review it as I know it's a bit overdue for those who are after the data or even just getting an idea on this Dell Precision 56 and 90. And as always, I will be looking at temperatures and fairness, some of the features, and I will be putting timestamps on this video so it can skip to a different section and maybe it should save you time. Now, first off is the specs of the Dell Precision 56 and 90. With the processor wise, it is using the Intel Core Ultra and these are series one but it is the h series so it is the much more powerful and high faster processor from the intel core ultra series and you can get anywhere between the core ultra 5 all the way to the core ultra 9. now if the memory wise has a maximum capacity of 64 gigs now they are sold to the system board so make sure you get the correct amount as you can't upgrade it later on now with the storage wise has two slot of m.2 now they are 2280 format and as for the graphics wise it does have your intel arc which is the combined with the processor wire so that's the integrated graphics to save you a bit of power but it also has discrete graphics and it contains anywhere between the nvidia rtx 1000 all the way to the rtx 5000 now this is the ada generation so it is the quicker generation here and the newer generation now with the actual display wise now there are actually two options here i've got here is the full HD plus. So plus actually means we also got an aspect ratio of 16 by 10. Now this is an IPS display for full HD one. It has a maximum brightness rating of 500 nits. Now as for the actual refresh rate, it is 60 hertz and it is a matte display. And the other option is the ultra HD plus and that is an OLED display so you're going to get have much more higher color accuracy out of that and that has a maximum brightness rating of 400 nits and that's going to be a little bit more of a glossy finish to it. Measuring the color gamma coverage of the full HD plus display it resulted with 99.9% .9 sRGB coverage, 86.7% Adobe RGB coverage and 96.4% DCI-P3 coverage. This is surprisingly high. I've been testing out Dell Precisions for a number of years and I don't normally see the high color accuracy in their displays, which is very unusual because they have very good monitors. I've actually measured this a couple of times to double check myself and I'm great to see that Dell finally taking on the feedback to hear that we want much more high accuracy in the displays, just like their monitors. And it's great to see that this Dell Precision 5690 finally has a very high color accuracy for their IPS range. The weight of the Dell Precision 5690 is 2.23 kilos plus the 165 watt power adapter becomes a combined weight of 2.68 kilos that you might be carrying around with you. Looking at temperatures of fan noise, when I took my measure, the ambient temperature room was 26 degrees Celsius. And just to give you an idea of how hot or how cool this laptop could be, my hand was anywhere between 36 to about 37 degrees temperature at this room temperature. So I took my base measure when the computer was idle 
and the hottest air around the keyboard measuring a maximum of 38 degrees celsius now as for the thermal i did put it in optimized mode and so there was a little bit of fan noise and it measured a maximum of 36 decibels and the average internal core temperature was 41 degrees celsius then i put 20 percent load on the computer that's pretty much average use that's tasks like office productivity work surfing the web streaming video and the hottest air around the keyboard measure a maximum of 41 degrees celsius and as for the fan it did spin up a little bit more and it measured a maximum of 39 decibels and the average internal core temperature was 55 degrees celsius then it put 50% load on the computer in balance mode and the hottest air around the keyboard measure maximum of 43 degrees celsius and as for the fan it's been up a little bit more and measured in the maximum of 45 decibels and the average internal core temperature was 65 degrees celsius then I'll put 100% load on the computer while it's in best performance with the optimized thermal mode and the hottest air around the keyboard measured a maximum of 44 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan, it did spin up a little bit more and measured in a maximum of 47 decibels. And the average internal core temperature actually dropped down to 61 degrees Celsius. So that's good to see that the actual thermals is doing well especially with the fan actually exhausting the hot air out while i had 100 percent load on the computer i put the computer in ultra performance in the thermal mode to allow the computer to run at its maximum potential and the hottest air around the keyboard measure a maximum of 47 degrees celsius and as for the fan noise it did spin up a little bit more to reach at a maximum of 49 decibels which is not that crazy loud at all it's considering a workstation class and the average internal core temperature did increase to an average of 88 degrees celsius while i had this 100 percent load i also measured the bottom back cover and the hottest air around the bottom back cover measured maximum of 37 degrees celsius considering this is a mobile workstation class computer the actual temperatures was very steady and also the actual fan noise was very steady so it wasn't varying up much a lot it stayed very steady at those measurements and considering that actually the temperatures of internal cultures while it's running at 100 percent low this could be done 24 7 and it'll still be running absolute fine let's examine the processor's behavior and performance for long duration tasks now this precision 5690 is configured with an intel core ultra 7 155h processor and i pretty much have a task that's running pretty much on 100 percent load on most of the system resources that's the processor memory storage and also the graphics as well now this task has been going for just about nearly two hours and i can see that the average speed of the processor is around about 3.3 to about 3.5 gigahertz and it's pretty much just fluctuates between that now we're just going to dwell a little bit more on the actual individual core performance so we're just going to have a look over here now i can see that the e cores you're looking at or efficiency cores you're looking at anywhere between 2.7 to about 3 gigahertz so that's what it's really averaging out on all those e cores and as for the performance cores now this is a different story here you're looking at anywhere between 3.1 to all the way to about 4.1 gigahertz it actually fluctuates between those numbers here it's very very high i've actually seen it go 4.3 uh, but it, it is still some of these cores are running really fast you can see down here and of course the last two cores they're pretty much parked because they're more for a very low power source so they're not really being used in this terms here which are as you can see just parked here now having a look a little bit more on the temperatures here we're just going to have a little quick dwell in just so you can see the temperatures on some of these cores here now we are averaging in between you're probably about 70 to about 100 degrees like well, i can see this peak is running 100 degrees there and but most of the time looking around about 88 degrees to about 93 degrees you're looking at around but that that's what i'm saying the actual average for most of the cores are running at so that's pretty high but this is still running extremely high numbers here and doing it for a very long duration tasks the 5690 comes with a 99.5 
one hour battery. And when I tested out the battery life, I managed to get 11 hours and 31 minutes for the modern Office battery life test and PC Mark 10, 2 hours and 6 minutes for gaming, and 14 hours and 31 minutes for the video playback on the Procom battery life test. Now I consider this all day battery life. There are four speakers in total in the 5690. There are two located on either side of the keyboard, which are user facing, and there are two located on the bottom side of either side of the laptop. And when I tested out the maximum volume of speakers, it managed to measure it in a peak of 88.8 decibels. I consider this in the upper medium range compared to other laptops. And I would actually say you wouldn't have any issues doing a video conference or doing a presentation where you're in a busy cafe or at doors. As for the sound quality and texture of the speakers, it does have a bit of bass, but it's not that overpowering low end bass. It is balanced towards the mids. The surprisingly, normally with a business laptop, you have very high, which are very strong for voice, but these are really nice. The highs aren't overpowering at all. They actually balance very nicely with the mids. And we have some decent reverb and nice acoustics. Being a mobile workstation class computer, I know that this precision 5690 is structurally strong and reliable and able to take a lot of punishment. I treat mobile workstation class computer like other business computers like rental cars. They're usually not owned by the person using it, it's usually owned by the business or company, and it's really lent out to the staff. And usually they don't really take care of it most of the time. So these are designed to be able to withheld a lot of punishment and daily punishment too. So as always, I'm just gonna do the, pretty much just check out the keyboard, see how much it flexes and Jeez, that is strong, and I know that is strong here. So I'm putting a lot of weight onto that, and that is gonna take the punishment easily there, not at all. Now, I'm also going to quickly look into the bend test. Oh, yeah, that's not, that's just, that's not even, oh, that's really, really strong. That's just, that's like a brick and stuff like that. That's how strong that is. And we're actually gonna quickly show you the, one finger test, so I've got it closed here, and just see how the hinge works. So my one finger here, and that's nicely easy to lift off after hitting the magnet, and that's very, very consistently smooth, and there you go. That's what how much it can do. I would say that's probably about, what I say, about 120, 130, what do you say that? I'd definitely love to hear what your thoughts on that, but that's how much it goes for there. I like to see Dell improve on that, go all the way to one, 80 would be definitely nice, just give me more options. Uh, but most workstation class are kind of up to this. Hey, I just found out and it's more because of the actual uh, exhaust than anything else. They're trying to make sure the exhaust goes in a specific way as it's really just pushing out air pretty much behind the hinge here. So, but this hinge is very strong and there, and I'm just gonna let that go. Now, just see if it, it clamps and I'm just holding this up and it is, clamping very well that's not that's not letting go and oh that's really really doing well so definitely well made hinge from dell for this precision 5690 these are the results of benchmarks performed on the precision 5690 these are results for passmark city bench 2024 pc mark 3d mark cross mark crystal disc mark geek bench 6 procon office Procon MPU, Procon AI, Procon Tensor RX, Procon Photo Edit, Procon Video Edit, Puget Photoshop, Puget Lightroom, Puget Premiere Pro, Puget After Effects, Puget DaVinci Resolve, Luxmark, Burmark, Octane Bench, Eugene Engine, Spec View Prep 2020. and some gaming benchmarks like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Far Cry 6, F1 2024, Fonza 5, and Wukong Black Myth. Have a quick look at the internals. We'll start off with the battery. Here is the 99.5 watt hour battery. It is a six cell battery here, and the battery connector is right here. It is protected behind this battery connector. It is nicely secured as there are two screws to secure in this battery connector. 
on the right hand side of us we've got the bluetooth wi-fi module here and then we've got the 2 m.2 slot which is you see as the length of it is a 2280 format here and as this has soldered onboard memory or ram you can't upgrade later on so there's no slots for that and then we've got a dual fan and dual pipe heat pipe system for the thermals as the thermals for the air directions come inwards and then goes directly straight out the back here so just give you an idea as this one says this is a cpu more for the cpu and this one's more for the gpu hopefully all this data and information is able to guide your decision on this dell prison 5690 i definitely say the performance there and that performance is able to be carried for a very long duration of time and we've got a great selection of ports and options for it and definitely it is a very sturdy and reliable mobile workstation now, i hope you find the video informative and enjoyed it if you did in support my channel smash that like button for me share this video it does help me out and as always imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting and i'll see you next video